happy holiday girl. Who says you have to wait until certain times of the year to get to celebrate? When every day's a holiday, we can combat stress and have more opportunities to have fun with our friends and family. Come celebrate with me and together we can live a holiday life. What's good with you holiday lifers? It's your girl, Gabby. And today is Little League Girls Day, a day dedicated to the physical prowess, mental strength, and determination that women and girls possess. One of the reasons why softball is such a great sport is because it allows everyone to play, regardless of gender. And its history is really special because as a girl, I can relate to wanting to be the first, wanting to make a difference. And that's exactly what today's episode is about, about trailblazers. And as we celebrate Little League Girls Day, we honor the sport that challenged societal norms and gave girls an opportunity to play sports just like the boys. So get ready to feel inspired. And I'm about to tell you why. Okay, guys, I'll paint the story for you. Imagine a snowy winter day in Chicago. One of those days when you really don't want to go outside because the cold inside your nose sends complete chills down your back. And the cold pinches your cheeks and feels super, super, super bitey. Well, it was on this day in November of 1887 that softball was invented. A football game between Yale and Harvard was going on, and alumni were eagerly awaiting the final score. It turns out that Yale beat Harvard that day, and one of the alumni was so excited that Yale won that they picked up an old boxing glove and threw it at a Harvard alumni who in return tried to hit it with a stick. According to TeamUSA.org, this gave George Hancock, a reporter for the Chicago Board of Trade, an idea. He suggested a game of indoor baseball. Naturally, Hancock's friends thought he was kidding. However, using what was available, he tied together the laces of the boxing glove for a ball. Using a piece of chalk, Hancock marked off a home plate, bases, and a pitcher's box inside the Farragut Boat Club Gym, with the two groups divided into teams. The final score of the game was 41-40, but was significant was that Hancock and his friends had invented a sport that would continue to grow in popularity, to where today more than 40 million people enjoy playing it each summer, making softball the number one team participant sport in the United States." End quote. And what's cool is that over time, the game grew in popularity in Chicago and was played in lots that were not quite big enough for a traditional game of baseball. The original game was called Indoor Outdoor, with Hancock recognized as the official authoritative source on how the game was played. The game got really popular, in particular in Minneapolis fire departments, where the firefighters would play the game with each other in their downtime. Games would be arranged between different departments, and the firefighters who played the game is ultimately what helped the game flourish. In the early days, people didn't quite know what to call the sport. So now I want to give you a quick quiz. Which of these names was an early name of softball? Was it A, kitten ball, B, twilight ball, C, pumpkin ball, or D, all of the above? And if you pick D, you are correct. Before softball got its name, there were a ton of crazy names people called the sport. For a game originally played by men, the names sure were cute. It didn't become softball until 1926 when Walter Hackinson, quoting TeamUSA.org, suggested it to the International Joint Rules Committee. Hackinson had come up with the name in 1926, but the committee didn't include the Amateur Softball Association, or ASA, until 1934. And what's even more crazy is that softball wasn't even a game available for women and girls to play until 1974, when Little League Softball for Girls was created. But getting to that point was not a quick journey for girls. I think a lot of us know some sort of story of a girl who wanted to play with the boys, whether it be baseball and basketball or in wrestling. Girls have been wanting to prove that they are just as tough as boys for years. And even more, a lot of times girls just want to play too, especially when we see our brothers and our dads playing outside. Who says we can't do the same thing? And when it comes to baseball, the precursor to Little League Softball, MomSteam.com says that the distinction of being the first girl to play on a Little League baseball team belongs to Katherine Johnson, who in 1950 tucked her hair under her baseball cap using a nickname and posing as a boy and tried out for a Little League team in coming New York. She made the team, then revealed her gender to her manager. The manager in the league allowed her to play, considering it a novelty but it wasn't considered a novelty to everyone. One year after she set foot on the baseball field, Little League Baseball rules changed. The new official rules then stated 
girls are not eligible under any conditions to play Little League Baseball. Now, over the next two decades, there were girls who attempted to play with the big boys, but when word got out that a girl was on the team, the team management would be threatened with having their team charter revoked, so the girls would have to go. Momsteam.com goes on to say that, in 1972, another such incident occurred when 12-year-old Maria Pepe tried out for and was placed on a team in the Hoboken, New Jersey Little League. She played in three games and then was compelled to leave the Young Democrats team. She decided to stop playing because the team would have lost their charter and would have been ineligible to play. But things were different this time. What ended up happening was Maria stepped down from the team to avoid a hundred little kids being mad at her, but the story wouldn't go away. She caught the attention of newspapers and the press until her family was approached by the National Organization of Women, or NOW, about starting a lawsuit to open the opportunity for girls to play Little League. The case took over two years to be won, but Momsteam.com says the final ruling came in early 1974 when local Little Leagues in New Jersey were told they must allow girls to try out. Instead of resisting further, Little League decided to not only admit girls worldwide, but to create a softball program for girls only, and the rest was history. But before we wrap things up with this episode, there is something that always has puzzled me about softball. The ball in softball is much bigger than a baseball, so it would seem as though it might be a bit easier to hit, but definitely harder to grip when compared to a baseball. And I think for those of us who don't play sports, we might view baseball as a bit more difficult because um, the ball is smaller and there are men who are playing it. Unfortunately, with it not being right, I think a lot of people in society generally view women's sports as sometimes less than men's sports. However, what I do like is that according to an article on Southwestern Oklahoma State University's website, it is scientifically proven that softball is harder than baseball. The speed of pitches, the reaction time for hitters and fielders, and the distance of the field indicates that softball is indeed harder than baseball. What's also amazing and proves that women softball players are just as competitive and talented, if not better, than their male counterparts is the famous softball player, Jenny Finch. JustBats.com says that she is the most recognized fast pitch softball player. Finch gained notoriety in the sports world when in the 2004 Pepsi All-Star Softball game, she struck out Albert Pujols, Mike Piazza, and Brian Gills. The University of Arizona alum still ranks in several categories for NCAA softball statistics and was described by Time Magazine as the most famous softball player in history. And just to put that accomplishment in perspective, Albert Pujols is a two-time World Series baseball champion and Mike Piazza is a retired Hall of Fame offensive catcher. Her accomplishment in the softball game means that girls have serious game. So let it be known, man, woman, boy, or girl, softball is a great sport to be played together and is here to stay. And now it's time for our activity of the day. I want you to look up a movie called A League of Their Own. It's a great inspirational movie about women in baseball and how they kept the sport alive during World War II. You can also grab a softball and go outside and play. Whether it's a real hard one or a soft plushy one, kids always enjoy playing ball outside. So get the ball, get outside and play. Well, what do you think? Did the history of softball encourage you to challenge cultural norms? Head on over to happyholidaylife.com to leave me a voice message of how you celebrate it today. You might hear yourself on a future episode. When you're there, you'll also have the opportunity to join Club Holiday. There you can sign up to receive a free monthly calendar full of fun activities for every day. If you like my podcast, please be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcast, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcast from. You can follow me on social media by using at a holiday life on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest, and at the happy holiday life on Instagram. Keep celebrating the holidays, stay safe, and live a holiday life. I'll talk to you tomorrow.